the one that comes in soft, soft, the one that comes in salt, soft, salt, soft. Wow. Years I've been making videos about salt and I still can't say it. Salt, soft. Period. Arguably, one of the most popular menstrual cup brands in the world, or at least in the U.S. right now, is the Salt brand. Today, I'm going to talk about both of their size options and their firmnesses. Their Salt Regular, or we'll call it Salt Original, and the Salt Soft, and help you figure out which one is right for you. Kim here from Period Nirvana, the internet's new destination for menstrual cup and menstrual disc advice, and home of the amazingly accurate Period Nirvana quiz, which is on periodnirvana.com to help you find the right cup or the right disc for you. And of course, I wouldn't be a self-promoter if I didn't let you know that I also run period.shop, which is a store for reusable menstrual products, including the salt cup. Period.shop accepts HSA cards directly on site, which is huge. If you didn't know, you can use your HSA or FSA to buy period products like the Salt Cup and other brands. And you could do that on period.shop with your card instead of filing for reimbursement, which makes things really easy. So now that that is over and I ask you to subscribe, do that. Now let's get to the review for the Salt Cup and the Salt Soft. So I'm a cup hoarder and I was looking through my drawer and found the first salt cup that I ever tried and of course I have trimmed the stem on it. So when they launched with the original salt cup, it came in the size small and the size regular. Um, they sized it as regular instead of large because not everyone wants to say, oh I'm a size large menstrual cup, so I respect that immensely. And uh, years later, they came out with Salt Soft, which um, fun. another fun fact uh, is partially something that I helped with in a prior life as a collaborator and designer. So I'm really proud of how the Salt Soft has really taken off and helped people find a really uh, good cup for them. And between these two options, there there's definitely pros and cons to the Salt and the Salt Soft. If you're trying to choose between the Salt Cup and the Salt Soft, that is going to be a big chunk of this video and also just some of my experience with both. One of the things that I love about Salt is that they have incredible branding um, and packaging. They have come out with um, a lot of new colors like this um, seafoam green, which is amazing. Every Salt you buy, you have the packaging, you have a carry pouch, you have the cup and the user manual. If you buy something that has two, like their new twin pack or their duo pack, you'll get two cups and two carry pouches and then one set of instructions. I think the price point's really, really great. It's uh, $29 basically for a single and then $47 for a duo. And um, to be able to try two sizes or two styles, that's a really great price. Um, and then also just to try one cup, $29, is you more than make your money back in a very uh, short couple of months, depending on the products you were using before. Um, any cup that you choose, salt or otherwise, is going to save you money, and that's a beautiful thing about switching to reusables. And then one thing that's uh, kind of new since the last time I made a video about um, the Salt Soft or the Salt Regular, they are now a B Corp, which is actually a really big deal for or any, any brand to be a B Corp. It takes a lot of work um, and that's very stringent process to be a B Corp. So when you see someone say they're a B Corp, it means that they're doing everything right behind the scenes. Starting with some of the features of the salt cup shape and size because their salt cup and their salt soft are identical in their sizing and shape. It's just the firmness that is different. Now the size small is a really, really excellent petite starter cup. Um, what I really love about it is that it is smaller than most of the other brands size smalls. So it does even work for teens, but they did also offer recently their uh, teen cup. We're not talking about the teen cup because I already have a video. The salt cup is 47 millimeters in the body and then 23 millimeters on the stem. And that is um, small enough or at least short enough that if you have a slightly lower than average cervix, it should be fine. Just think about if your cervix needs to dip and the diameter is 41 millimeters at the top. The Salt Small does hold 25 milliliters, it's not the most, um, but for a size one cup, that's pretty average. And then the Salt Size Regular has a 52 millimeter body length with a 18 millimeter length stem. And then the capacity is about 30 milliliters. 
That is again very, very average. And then the diameter is 46 millimeters. So it is also very, very average. And I would say it's even a better average than something like the Diva Cup. Um, the Diva Cup, which is a very popular brand, it is a great average firmness cup. It's really right in the middle, which is what I love about it. But both of their sizes are a little long for most people. And so if you're like me and your first cup was a Diva Cup, it felt like it was kind of hanging out a little bit. It was too long. And back then I didn't know to measure my cervix before I started with a cup. So what I like about Salt is that both of their sizes are very average in length. They're very average in firmness. If you cut the stem of either size, it should work even if you're a little bit slightly lower than average on a cervix. It's only if you have a low cervix that you are kind of out of the running for a salt. So that's really the reason that um, you see it so often. And in my work on period nirvana, it's one of the reasons that it's on the quiz because the soft works for a lot of people and the regular original firmness cup works for a lot of people. And those do have different audiences, but they very much converge. There's a lot of uh, crossover. So if you look at the percentage of who can use a menstrual cup, which cup can be used, that diagram has a lot of salt in it because it is just a well-designed average cup. And there are cups that I like more than salt and there are discs that I definitely prefer for myself. But when I think about the general population as someone who's helping other people find a cup, salt's a great starter. Speaking of cervix height, if you are new to cups and you're thinking about salt or any brand, it is really important to check and find out what your cervix height is on your period. You just reach in, find your cervix, measure your finger, and then make sure whichever cup you're looking at small, regular, whatever brand fits inside you. You can find a full video on how to measure on uh, the YouTube channel and I'll link it in the video description. So let's talk about firmness next because that is really important when you're talking about the brand salt since they do have two different firmness options. Uh, they're not the only brand who does this. Lena, um, which is a brand that came out um, before salt, started with the Lena and then their Lena Sensitive. The Cotton Mermaid has a firm and a soft. Maluna, which is a TPE brand, has three different firmnesses. So Salt is not the first brand to offer different firmnesses, but um, it is nice that it's just kind of like a regular or soft in terms of trying to pick between them. What firmness is, is the resistance of the cup when you squeeze it in your hands, which is kind of like it being in your body. The vagina is a muscle, um, so it is sort of squeezing against that. If there is a firmness to the cup, if it's very firm, it applies a kind of outward pressure. And so that comes into play with folding, it comes into play in wearing, and uh, a cup that is softer will have um, less outward pressure, less firmness. And so those things really come into play when you use a cup. And Frankly, it's very hard to know which one you should choose when you've never used a cup before. No one can kind of think about their body and say, um, you know, I think I like a firm cup or I think I would like a soft cup. Um, there are some clues, which is why um, it is wise to take the quiz on period nirvana because that kind of asks you the questions you don't know you need to ask yourself. Um, but things like physical activity, um, history of uh, cramping or just generally feeling like you're a sensitive person, you might want a softer cup. Firmer cups do a few things. They're better if you're first time cup users because it, when you fold it, it opens up really easily because it has outward pressure. It wants to be open. And so when you think about cups and leaks, if it doesn't open inside you and you don't know that, it's going to leak. Um, another thing that makes a firmer cup a little bit better is that um, it's kind of easier to push into place because it has a firmer body, um, which can be easier when you're a new cup user. If you're someone who does a lot of high impact exercising or uh, weightlifting, chances are you have a really nice toned pelvic floor. Or if you're someone who's done pelvic floor therapy to literally strengthen your pelvic floor, you might be a better candidate, not only for a firmer cup, but maybe even a smaller cup because you have worked on your pelvic floor, the muscles aren't relaxed. There, it, menstrual cup fit is all about diameter. Um, cervix height is also very important, but when it comes to it staying in place, it's all diameter. Um, and so all of these things come into play. Um, some of the downsides of firm cups is that the pressure of them wanting to be open can work against you and apply bladder pressure. So as you can see, 
If it is in the body um, and it is a firmer cup, maybe even a firm and larger cup, it might push against the bladder and apply pressure in a way that makes you feel like you have to urinate or makes you feel just like a sense of it's there, um, just a general awareness, basically. Um, I wouldn't even call it uncomfortable. I wouldn't call it discomfort. It's just, you know, it's there. Um, a good menstrual cup is something that you shouldn't feel inside your body. So um, those things may mean that you need to switch to a softer cup. And like I said, we can't really guess until we try a cup what our vagina is going to like. Another downside of a firm cup is that if you're new to cups, um, depending on the fold and your kind of dexterity, a firmer cup wants to open, and so it can be hard to keep it folded while inserting. Um, there is like a level of dexterity that you're just not used to, um, and so as you're inserting, it kind of wants to open early, and the firmer it is. So that's something else to think about. Um, none of these are things that you know, you can't get around with practice, such as keeping it folded or getting it pushed inside. That stuff comes with practice. Now, soft cups. Soft cups are, um, they're, they're not going to apply that kind of outward pressure. So they tend to be more comfortable, especially if you are someone who is sensitive, who might have had a history of cramping or someone who's already tried a cup and they found it too firm and they felt that bladder pressure or that it's their feeling, um, then a softer cup is a better cup. If you're new to cups, it doesn't mean you shouldn't start with a salt soft or a, a less firm cup. It just means that you're probably going to have a less leak-free, easier experience with a firmer cup for the first time you use it and beyond. But that doesn't mean a soft cup can't be something that works for you. You just need to know ahead of time, hey, I might have to work on this a little bit to get it to open. Um, Folding and keeping softer cups like a salt soft is easier um, because it has less resistance, less I want to openness. <laughs> so it's easier to hold it and keep it folded while you insert. But then when you're inserting it, it doesn't have that pop that firmer cups do. And so it's not potentially going to make that amazing first time open seal that a firmer cup might. Now, there's no guarantee for either one. And there's no guarantee that this won't do that for you. It's just the generalized experience of most people. So knowing if you choose a salt soft because you feel like that's gonna be a better, more comfortable fit for you, you might want to use something like a punch down fold where you can then push against the base to help it open. Um, the labia fold is another good one. If you need a very narrow um, body fold that helps, or you can simply reach inside and push against the vaginal wall to help it have room to open basically. So most people do find the salt soft more comfortable or a softer, what I would call average soft firmness um, in the long run. So if they start with a firmer cup like salt cup, many of them eventually buy the salt soft um, if they like the shape of that cup because of that. But if you're very physically active, probably wanna to stick to the firmer ones. And all of these options are going to be covered in the Period Nirvana quiz. So if you just don't want to think about it, you can take that quiz on periodnirvana.com and see if you're matched to salt cup and which size, because I also help you find the size. Same for salt soft and which size. Um, and then there's 20 some other out outcomes in case salt is not the ideal cup for you, which could be the case. I'm going to talk a little bit more about my experience with both and which I prefer. Um, I feel like you could probably guess by now, but I'll give you that insight. <laughs> um, I did start using uh, salt as a brand with the regular cup, and the regular did, it fit well for me. Um, it was a great length. As I've mentioned in many videos, I have a lower than average cervix at the beginning of my cycle, and then a very average cervix by the end. So this regular salt was, um, it fit all through um, those stages of my cycle. Um, and the capacity was plenty for me. In fact, when I used salt the most, I had a lighter period. My period in my body has changed a little bit, um, which is why I've been leaning towards using discs in my non-review time, which is basically never. The only knock against the salt for me was that it made my urine come out slower. It was not a feeling of pressure. I didn't feel like I had to urinate, um, but I did feel like I peed slower. Um, and just to like 
add one little thing that I don't see talked about a lot in menstrual cup communities about cup firmness. If a cup restricts your urine flow or um, you know slows your urine flow and you don't notice that you aren't done urinating because it does feel different when you have that restriction against your urethra from a firmer cup, if you're not emptying your bladder all the way, it could lead to urinary tract infections. UTIs are not fun. Um, they are the least fun of anything. I've never had one that was induced by a cup. In fact, I haven't had one since college. So and I think we can all guess why the college ones came into existence. Um, so I don't have personal experience with it, but I, as an observer, as a person who studies our community and correlations, um, we don't have a study to say, hey, firm cups cause UTIs. But there is definitely, for people who are UTI prone, if you're using a firm cup and you're not emptying your bladder all the way, it might potentially uh, contribute to a UTI. So if you're finding that is the case, then you definitely want to switch to a softer cup or even switch to a menstrual disc, which doesn't apply that kind of pressure anywhere in the vaginal canal because it's up high. So there's another thing for you, another option. And when the salt soft was coming about, um, I of course was testing that quite a bit. And I already knew I liked cups that were on the average soft spectrum versus the average firm spectrum, which is the original salt. And um, you know, that was like it for me in terms of the cup. It's a really good Goldilocks cup for me. Um, I do like firmer cups when I just don't feel like messing with, you know, hey, is this open or not? Um, so I do, I do go back and forth, especially, um, you know, when I have the option. But these days, there's so many things waiting to be put in my vagina that I don't even get to play with the cups that I know are cups that work for me. If you're thinking about some of the cups you know um, that you might be more familiar with. The Diva, in this case size two, and the regular, you really see how different they are in the body length if you chopped off the stem. So like I said, I really appreciate that salt cups work if you have an average or even maybe even slightly lower than average cervix, which you're not gonna get with Diva. If you're going to a place like Target, which how dare you, instead of shopping at period.shop, um, one of the other cups you'll see on the shelves is the Cora. Um, so this is the salt small versus the Cora. And the Cora small um, is really a good starter cup size. I really like it, um, but so is salt. But in fact, Cora does beat them out in petiteness if this were going to be something if you had to buy a teen cup on the shelf. Um, and right now salt's teen is not on shelves at Target, but the size small Cora or the size one, whatever they call it, is. And then lastly, if we're looking at Target options, um, this is the salt soft regular, and this is the size full fit flex which is their larger flex has been a really popular cup but it is actually pretty close to the salt soft and firmness and of course it has this um, doohickey where you break the seal it's not a cup that i prefer i would much rather use like a basic cup like salt um, but if you have some of the issues like grasping things, reaching things. This one is actually a very high cervix cup. Here's another small that you might've heard of. This is the Salt Small and the Lena. This has a more flared rim. And Lena is a great starter cup as well. This one tapers down a little bit more and um, has a rolled rim versus a flared rim. And then another cup that is popular, um, that is comparable as an average starter cup is the Organic Cup. This is their size B. This is the Salt Regular. So salt is a little bit, um, I wouldn't say, uh, I wouldn't say bland, but I think that they play things very safe. Um, and they want to be this big player. They want to be on all the shelves and that's kind of the way to do it. There is a bit of just oceans and beaches and, um, you know, fluffy stuff on their Instagram and in their marketing materials. Um, versus, you know, real gritty stories and people and uh, flavor, I guess, is a good way of putting it. But, you know, every brand is going to be different. I still think they do a beautiful job. Um, it's just not as like, woo, you know, fun, like some of the brands that um, Nixit and Hello Cup come to mind that just have this really like poppy, fun, um, slightly more edgy content. We don't buy cups for those reasons always. And this is just like, hey, Good, all around, perfect starter cup for most people. Um, and again, that's why I say measure your cervix, 
Take the quiz on purynirvana.com to find if salt's right for you, and it's one of our top results, so it very well could be. Um, but if it's not, you're going to get a recommendation that's really meant for your body. And then if you are purchasing menstrual cups or menstrual discs, do think about purchasing from Shop. You're going to support my small business and help me create more educational free content like these reviews and these videos on YouTube. That's it. I think I said a lot about what's not a lot to say. <laughs> If you have any questions, leave them in the comments for me. I would love to answer them and help you. You can like this video, which always helps for YouTube to know, hey, this is good stuff. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more period cups, period disc, period content. Find me on Instagram at period nirvana or TikTok at period nirvana. I post really short informational clips there. And if you need more help, you can join the period nirvana community on Facebook and where myself and my friends, y'all, can discuss all of these troubleshooting or just off topic, but menstrual cup related things. That's it for now. I will see you in the next cup disc video review, whatever it is. Bye. Oh, so much talking in one single day. Did I really call them land? I just say whatever comes out of my mouth sometimes. They're nice. It does a lot of um, high impact, ooh, 